Welcome back to Boom and Bust. I'm your host, Tony Clement, having a conversation with Marcus Kolga. He is a senior fellow at McDonald Laurier Institute. Uh, Marcus, uh, peace con- not peace conference, but conference on Ukraine, uh, looking at potentially uh, around the corner a little bit on uh, what uh, peace would look like. Love to get your sense of really how that would work. What sort of security guarantees would Ukraine need and, and other supports to prevent uh, uh, this continuing war by Russia on its very existence? Well, look, Tony, I, I think that the expectations for uh, this uh, peace summit that happened in, in Switzerland were perhaps a little bit uh, elevated amongst uh, some people in, in the Western world. Um, I don't think there was any real expectation that this would result in peace. Um, the objective of that conference was to bring together um, as many countries as possible. And, and there were nearly 100 uh, representatives from various different countries around the world. Um, to find some sort of consensus on what peace might look like. Um, and most of those who attended uh, that conference, you know, with the exception of some of those BRICS countries, uh, it was really unfortunate that Saudi Arabia uh, and India and South Africa did not fa- sign the final uh, communique, but most others did. Um, and in that communique, um, they, all of those countries uh, committed themselves to respecting the material integrity of, of Ukraine and um, restoring the sovereignty of its uh, its borders. And so, um, you know, I, I think that it was successful in, in that regard. Um, Vladimir Putin certainly has, through his uh, state media channels and such, tried to uh, denigrate the entire process. Uh, he, he was, of course, calling the, the summit uh, a failure. Um, because for Vladimir Putin, who is essentially, um, you know, a, a common schoolyard bully, um, the greatest threat that he faces is when the rest of the world is unified uh, uh, against him. And so, you know, he was obviously going to um, attack the summit, um, downplay any successes that it could have. And he issued his own um, basically declaration uh, during the summit stating that the only a way that uh, there would be any sort of peace uh, with Ukraine is if Ukraine um, basically uh, ceded all of the territories that Russia currently uh, partially or fully occupies, if uh, if Ukraine is uh, demilitarized, and if there's a guarantee that Ukraine will not join NATO. Now, I don't think there's any chance that either Ukraine or the Western world uh, will agree to any of those terms. And so um, what came out of this? You know, we know that uh, uh, the U.S. and Ukraine signed a, a long-term uh, agreement. Now, there is no real serious commitment to anything uh, within that agreement. Uh, you know, it's just basically it's a statement, an MOU, for, if you will, of, of a partnership. Um, but it may lay the groundwork uh, down the road for continued U.S. support for, for Ukraine. So that did come out of that. Um, And there's hope that uh, at the NATO summit, there will be a more concrete declaration on a roadmap for Ukraine uh, in the future, Um, because we do know that when this war does end, and it will eventually end, um, there is an open door for for Ukraine in NATO. And um, quite frankly, that is the only pathway to ensuring a a peaceful and stable Europe and world uh, down the road, but that's still still a ways away. And you know, I think the task for the Western world uh, is very clear. We need to continue supplying Ukraine uh, with the weapons it needs uh, to defeat this inv- invader and to restore the sovereignty of all the territories that Russia currently occupies, and to deliver um, that bloody nose uh, to Vladimir Putin as a as a schoolyard bully, because we know that is the only way we can stop schoolyard bullies from going around and stealing everyone's lunch money is by handing them a bloody nose. And that's what we need to make sure that we empower Ukraine, give it all that it needs to to deliver that for itself and for all of us. We've got about 20 seconds left, Marcus. Uh, are you optimistic about the future in this regard? Uh uh, it's hard to be optimistic, but I, I want to say yes. As as long as uh, you know those tr- those weapons keep flowing to Ukraine, I think that it, they can hold out uh, and hold out uh, long enough that uh, hopefully they, they will eventually win this uh, this thing. Marcus uh, Kolga, it's been great having you on the program. Thank you very much for your insights. Thanks for having me on, Tony. 
That was Marcus Kolga, senior fellow at McDonald Laurier Institute, uh, talking about the situation in Ukraine, what Canada and the West can do more of in this uh, very dire situation. Thanks for watching today.